praise God. I, I want to wish every mother here in the auditorium, as well as every mother watching online, a happy Mother's Day. And I, I hope that uh, you're, you're going to be treated like a queen today, amen, amen. by your family. And uh, praise the Lord. So husbands, treat your wives, amen, with some honor and with some blessings, amen? amen. Glory to God. I, you know, we kind of celebrated uh, Mother's Day yesterday for my wife, Yen, and I ended up, you know, buying her some flowers and, and treating her out to, you know, bringing some lunch home. And uh, I think she really enjoyed it. Uh, it was some yeah, Vietnamese food because she's Asian and she loves that kind of food. Amen. And uh, so I, I think she was blessed yesterday. Amen. Glory to God. But God is so good. So we're talking about uh, mothers. And the title of my sermon is Keys to Being a Godly Mother. And uh, really, uh, men, don't turn off on this because you could actually say keys to being a godly person. So you could take these keys. So men, you're, you're still included in this sermon. You don't have to turn off. And uh, praise God. And so we're going to look at um, Mary, the mother of Jesus. And we're going to look at how uh, she um, presented godly characteristics that really caused God to have uncommon favor on her life. And, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I want the uncommon favor of God to be on my life. How many can get an amen there? How many people would like to have the uncommon favor? favor of God on your life. You know, I, I believe there's some things that we need to do to institute the blessings of God on our life. Amen. And so we need to look at Mary to see, you know, what kind of person she she was for 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 the angel to declare that she was highly favored of God. And, uh, you know, I want to be that highly favored person. Amen. And so we're going to look at Luke 1. 26 through 38, and I'm going to just kind of break it up a little bit. But this is really powerful because I'm going to say this, that that you never know when God's going to rock your world. Can I get in? In other words, you don't know what day or hour the blessing of God is going to fall on you. Amen. Amen. And that's why we need to keep expecting. Look at your neighbor and say, say, keep expecting. So, Because you never know when God is just going to just drop a bombshell blessing in your life. Amen. And so let's look at this because this is really powerful. And I think we're going to get some really key truths out of this. It says here in Luke 1 verse 26, and I'm reading uh, in the New King James Version. Uh, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. That's powerful. That's a powerful greeting there. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. So first of all, I want to just hit some key points right here uh, about Mary. First of all, uh, it, it says that, you know, she was a virgin. And um, this is really powerful because I think we can look at this as that she was pure. And, uh, you know, I, I think what God is looking for, and if you want to have uncommon favor in your life, you're going to have to walk in some purity. Oh, am I, am I talking today? In other words, we, 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 we need to be, 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 be pure in, in our motives, in our attitudes. We got to stay pure before the Lord. Uh, another word for pure is, is holy. Now, we know that God's blood makes us holy. And holy means being set apart for God's use. But, but God wants us walking in holiness or, 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 or being pure in his eyes. Amen. I, I like what it says in Romans uh, or in 2 uh, Corinthians 11, 2 and 3. It's, it says this, um, and Paul's writing to the Corinthian church. It says, I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. I promise you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent, cunning, 
your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. So here, the, the Apostle Paul is, is saying that, that we need to be careful as Christians um, that we don't uh, start allowing impurity into our lives. We need to be very careful that, 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 that in other words, the Bible talks about that we, we have to guard our hearts. The Bible talks about guarding our hearts. How do you do that? You, you guard what you look at. You guard what you listen to. You, you, you're, you're, you have to put uh, a guard up because there's lots of things out here in this world that can corrupt us. Oh, I'm talking today. There's, there's things out here that can corrupt us and bring us into a lower state than where, what God wants us to walk in. God wants us walking in the spirit. The Bible talks about, but not walking in the flesh. So we need to be very careful that we're not allowing the wrong things into our equation. You know, if I'm watching TV and I'm watching a movie and if if it's not, you know, TV movie, normally they cut out some, you know, if lots of movies these days have cursing in it. And, And sometimes when they make a movie on TV, they take out the cursing. Praise the Lord on that. And but sometimes they will leave some things in there. And if they put, you know, a GD in there, I'm turning the channel. Why? I just don't want that into my system. I I, I just don't want uh, to be feeding my spirit on profanity. Are you hearing? I don't want to be putting that in. Even I'm even very careful now and. Of course, I, I, I do love, you know, one of my favorite movies, you know, uh, probably when I was a little bit more carnal, is Gladiator. I, I, I love the movie Gladiator, but there's a lot of killing in that and uh, a lot of violence. And we got to be careful. Even the games and the video games that, that the kids are playing have a lot of violence in it. It's about dying and death and, and killing. And, and we need to be very careful that we're not allowing this to be in our equation. Amen. And so, and so here, he's saying here uh, that, that, that Jesus uh, wants a, a, uh, uh, to a pure bride, amen, a pure virgin, amen, bride. We're going to talk about that in Ephesians. Let's look at Romans 16 and 19. This is really good. It says, everyone has heard about your obedience. This is the Apostle Paul writing to uh, the Romans. And it says, so I rejoice because of you, but I want the, the church in Rome... But I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent of what is evil. Romans 6, 19. Paul is saying that we need to be experts in what is good, but we need to be novice in what is evil. Sometimes what the enemy will do is that he will try to get us looking, and sometimes Christians, searching out evil things just out of curiosity what it's all about. Amen. Uh, sometimes you're on the uh, on the internet, and sometimes there'll be an ad up, an, an ad that will just pop up while you're on the internet innocently, maybe reading the Bible. Anything can, you, you're doing something innocently on innocently on the internet, and uh, and there, there's there's ads that will pop up. There there will be things that will pop up. Like I saw one one thing, like a, a prominent minister. Uh, it says uh, they have just left their church. And, and I know that's not true. And, but what, what they're called is fishers. And, and what they're doing is they're trying to fish you to go to their website. Um, to, to, to feed on what? Gossip. The, the enemy loves us to, you know, the flesh wants to feed on gossip. Amen. It, 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 I wonder what that person is doing. I wonder why, it, what, is that pastor quitting their church? And, 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 it's, it, it, and you can't believe everything on the internet. Amen. And we got to be, you can't even believe everything that you watch on the news. Amen. Hello. Right. Right. Amen. Even the news is skewed in a certain way to get you to think a certain way. Amen. So, so we got to be, we got to be, the Bible says we have to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So we need to be wise in even the information that we take in because even the news can be slanted in a way that will get you to think a certain way about an individual. Are you hearing what I'm saying, Dick? And so we need to be um, 
uh, wise in how we hear things and, and not just take things for face value. Amen. And so and so we need to be very careful. So so here he says here we need to be wise in what is good and innocent in what is evil. In other words, we don't we don't want to be experts in evil. <laughs> we want to be experts in good. We don't want to be good liars. In other words, <laughs> you know, if, if somebody says you're a good liar, I don't know if you're a Christian, if that's a good compliment. Oh, you can lie through your teeth without even batting an eye. No, 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 no. We're not. We, you, if you're a Christian, you should be a terrible liar. Amen. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you should be stumbling over your words if, you, if you're fibbing a little bit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why? Because, you know, any time that, that, that I, I, the flesh wants me to push me to lie, I keep thinking about that scripture. What scripture is that, Pastor? All liars refine themselves in, uh, in, in hell or in the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And I, and I think about that and I say, I don't want to be a liar. Amen. Who's, you know what I'm saying? In other words, I know I'm saved and I know there's grace and I know that I could probably uh, color the truth a little bit. But, but, but why, why color the truth? No, no, let's just be honest. Let's be straightforward people. We can be honest and we can be nice about it. Amen. So, 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 so again, uh, I, I'm very careful with, with telling the truth. I want to be truthful. I want to be pure in, in everything that I do. Amen. Amen. And if we do that, I believe there's favor. God, God, God gives us favor when we're walking in truthfulness, when we're walking in purity. Amen. Uh, I like what it says in Ephesians. And, and this is really good since uh, uh, your mom, mom's out here. You, you're also our wives. And uh, this is really good. It says, husbands, love your wives. Now, this is for the husbands out here. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word to present to her, to himself, a radiant church without stain or wrinkle, or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. That's powerful. So, so listen, I really believe we're in the last days. You know, you can just look around and you can see we're in the last days. And, and, and Jesus is coming back. Amen. Jesus come back. And we, as the church, we are considered the bride of Christ. Amen. Um, and so, so Jesus is coming back for his bride, right? And so he's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. Amen. He's coming back with, with a bride that, that's holy and blameless. Now, we know that the blood of Jesus makes us holy. We know that the blood of Jesus makes us blameless. Amen. But see, but, but we still need to walk in holiness. We still need to walk in purity. We need, we need to be fight. You know, we need to be standing against sin. Amen. Amen. Is this unpopular these days to say that, that we need to not be sinning? Okay, you know, uh, no, no, we need to be standing against that and standing for what's right. Amen. Amen. And so, so we got, we got to do that. And, and we don't want any areas of our life uh, that doesn't reflect the glory of God. Amen. So everything that I do, you know, even sometimes I don't wear my seatbelt when I drive. You know, I just don't put it on. I don't think about it. It's not something that's automatic because I haven't set that in an automatic. And uh, but, you know, that's something I should be doing. And uh, and so every time I think about it, even if I'm driving, I need to put that seatbelt on. I put it on. Why? Because I want to be compliant to the law. Amen. And, 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 and also it could save my life. So, so, so obeying God's word and walking in the truth of God's word can save your life. <laughs> it, can, it, it can deliver you from some things that the enemy may want to put on you. Amen. And so let's just continue because I was just talking about uh, uh, that, that she was uh, pure. And I, I like what she said. She, she, was, she, she, was, uh, she, she said she was considering what kind of manner of greeting when he said, you're a highly favored one, she didn't see herself as being highly favored. Uh, to me, she was just surprised at that type of greeting. And I, I believe another key element to being a godly mother and to being a godly person is humility. 
Oh man, now I'm talking. I'm talking about being humble. And, and really, that is really the key. That, that is a key to our walk in Christ is humility. Humility, well, you know what really truly humility is? It's submitting to God's word. Oh, it's saying, God, if your word says this, I will submit to it. If your word says this is good, then I will declare that is good. If your word says that this is bad, then I will declare that that th- that is bad. If gossip is bad, then I'm declaring that's bad and I'm going to agree with you. So I submit myself under your authority. And so what humility is, is agreeing with God's word and submitting ourselves under the truth of God's word. Am I talking to anybody today? In other words, if you see it in the word of God and the Bible says give and, and you should be giving uh, uh, out of your treasuries and blessing people, then give. Amen. Amen. Why? There's a blessing. There's always a blessing attached to our obedience. I love that. And so, so if the word says, you know, what to, the word will tell you what to do, you know, and the word says, be good to those that are in the household of faith. So, so we're called to bless one another. If the word says that, then we need to be blessing one another. Amen. And, and why? Be, because we want to agree with that. If the word says for us not to do something, we don't want to do that. Amen. So, so what we're doing is we're being humble. We're, we're humbling ourselves. We're not just by going by our feelings or what feels right. You know, the world goes with what feels right. If they, if they feel, if, if it's a man and he feels like he's a woman, then, you know, then he can be on the cover of some magazine and be the best woman of the year. You know what I'm talking about? You know, he could dress up as a woman, you know, wear makeup like a woman, get plastic surgery uh, like some women. But anyway, we'll go there and, uh, and, and, and be like the number one, you know. But listen, we don't live on feelings. No, we live by the word of God. That, you know, Jesus said, you know, that, that I, you know, every, you know, um, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I see, that's the reason why I try to get as much word as I can into me. Because if you continue to keep word going on on a continual basis, you don't have to try to walk it out. You will automatically walk it out. Amen. And so here in verse 30, so we see that that humility is another key, I believe, to having the uncommon favor of God. We know humility will actually cause God to raise us up. When we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he will raise us up in due season. When a godly woman, when she humbles herself under the mighty hand of God, she'll be raised up. Amen. Amen. And so now let's look at this. Let's look at verse 30 here and we'll continue to read down Luke 1 30 says the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus and he will be great and will be called the son of the highest And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There will be no end. And then Mary said to the angel, how can this be uh, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said uh, to her, "Uh, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the son of David. Of God. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren, for with God nothing will be impossible. I love this because, you know, it shows that God just did a double miracle. God is doing a miracle in Mary's life. And, and Mary is now going to be carrying the Son of God and raising the Son of God. But not only that, Elizabeth was barren. Now, some of you are, are praying and believing God for breakthrough. Anybody believe in God for some breakthroughs in the house today? Anybody believe in God for some breakthroughs? Uh, you know, and, and, and I believe this, that, 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 that we need to continue to believe God for, for, for breakthroughs. But, but God can work in suddenlies. And God can just do a suddenly like he did with 
Mary. And see, Mary was just walking it out and God blessed her. She was she was uh, she was humble and, and she was pure. And we're going to find out another key characteristic of her that she was full of faith. And listen, God blesses those that are full of faith. Amen. And but but when we're walking in faith and we're walking in purity and we're walking in humility, uh, we're going to see the suddenly come in our life with Elizabeth. That was Elizabeth and her husband, Zechariah. They were they stood for many, many years and it looked like the promise wasn't going to come. But God still worked the promise. Listen, listen, it may look like it's too late. It may look like it's over. But it's not over until it's over. God can work a miracle even in your latter years. No matter how long you've been believing God, God can do a suddenly in your life. And he did that with Elizabeth. He did a double miracle. And I love this, that God works miracles in families. Because Elizabeth was, they were cousins, amen. And so, and so that was powerful. And so, so nothing, say nothing shall be impossible with God. And I'm telling you, maybe you're believing God for a breakthrough. And I'm going to say this, keep standing and you're going to see the breakthrough. It's, it's a process. You may be in a process of your miracle, but, but it's, it will happen. It will come to pass. Say, I believe that. I love this in verse 38. It says, then Mary said, behold, uh, the, the, thy maid servant of the Lord, let it be according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is really powerful because, you know, uh, she uh, the uh, she believed the angel's word. She believed in the power of God. She believed that God could uh, that the Holy Spirit could come upon her and, and that she could become pregnant by by the power of God, by just receiving the word. And I'm telling you, when you start receiving the promises of God's word, whatever promise you're standing on, you keep standing on that promise, keep confessing the promise. And pretty soon what happens is you will conceive the reality of that promise in your spirit. You've got to keep confessing. Pastor, you mean I've got to keep talking the word? Uh, yes. You're going to have to continue to talk the promises of God's word. Yeah, until you see the promise. And then you might need to talk the word after you see the promise. Why? Because the devil wants to take away what God gives us. I'm going to say that again. The devil would love to try to steal what God gives us. So we have to continue to confess the promises of God's word, I would say, on a daily basis. Confess that my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Confess that that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, even if you just sinned. What? Yes, start confessing some truth. Don't, Don't confess what your actions are saying. Confess what the word of God says. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, no matter what you're battling. You may have some weaknesses of the flesh, but I'm telling you, as you continue to build your spirit man up with the truth of God's word, it's going to push out every negativity that the enemy will try to put on us in any area of our lives. Do you believe that today? Amen. I believe that today. I'm telling you, the more words you get in, and, the, and, and pretty soon, you will start acting on the word that comes into your equation. Amen. Somebody say, I'm the righteousness of God. Righteousness of God. In, in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Amen. So, so we need to see this. And so the, one of the keys to Mary being supernaturally blessed by the Lord was she was a woman of faith. She took God at his word. And what does that mean? That means regardless of what the circumstances are saying, you're going to believe God's word over the circumstances. Isn't that what Abraham did? Didn't Abraham believe God even though Sarah, you know, they were over the age of uh, childbearing, even though he was an old man, the Bible says, you know, he was old. (laughs) Ninety nine. Right. He was old. And, and Sarah was older. I'm just going to say older. Amen. 
And she was older. Amen. We don't ever want to call a woman old. Amen. Amen. And she was older. But you know what? They believe God in spite of what it looks like. See, I believe church is going to be in full. Well, they say half capacity, but we can fit our church in. And we have 140 seat auditorium. We can fit our church in here. And probably a few more visitors. Amen. Next Sunday when they open up. Glory to God. And so, and so we need to just take God at his word. Look at your neighbor and say, take God at his word. And so she was a woman that was a woman of faith that just accepted God's word. That, that, you know, in other words, this is what faith boils down to. It's trusting God even when circumstances don't look right. It's saying, God, I know that, that you said in your word that you have good plans for me. But how, I may be in debt. I might be battling some sickness. But your word says that you have good plans for me. Your word says, by Jesus stripes, I'm healed. This is what your word says. Your word says, yeah, my, my kids aren't acting right. But your word says that you're going to pour out your spirit in the last days, even on my children. You said that, Lord. If you said that, Lord, then I, it doesn't matter how crazy my kids are acting. I'm talking to somebody today. It doesn't matter how dumb they're acting. God can do a work in your children. God can turn them around. Amen. It doesn't matter what. They could be dealing with an illness. They could be dealing with, uh, uh, you know, any, any area that the enemy's trying to deceive them in. God can come in and rock their world. Amen. Amen. Say, I believe that. Say, I believe God's going to rock my kid's world for good this year. Amen. That's if you have kids. Now, of course, you know, if even if you are, if you don't have kids, people are still looking to you as an example. You may not realize that. But if you're a godly mother or if you're not a mother per se, but if you are leading in some area of your life, people are looking up to you. And so you can be still considered a spiritual mother to some people out there. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? So I'm just not saying you have to be a physical mother. You can just be a leader because people are watching. Amen. Amen. And, and so we can demonstrate the goodness of God in our lives. And we can, we can do that by living an example of a godly person's life. Amen. And so here um, uh, she, she had faith. And I love this scripture here because, listen, uh, I'm going to get out of my seat, okay? Can I do that? Um, listen, uh, if we're going to walk this life, we can't walk in fear. Amen. If we're going to walk this life in God, we have to walk in faith. Amen. We have to walk this walk in faith. And I, I like Hebrews eleven six. It says, without faith, it's impossible. That's a, this is a pretty powerful scripture. It's impossible to please him. Who? God. For he who comes to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So, so this is saying here that we cannot please God unless we're walking by faith. Amen. Amen. So listen, listen, this is, say, this is what this is saying to me. If I'm down, if I'm depressed, if I'm looking at the circumstances, if I'm saying, if, if I'm saying, oh, woe is me, things never work out, I ne I'm not going to ever see the blessing of God in my life, then you're not walking by faith. Oh, I'm going to always be stuck. No, the power of God can unstuck you. Am I talking to anybody today? Yeah, I'm telling you, the power of God, it doesn't matter. It, the power of God can unstuck you. I, I was thinking about uh, a, a, a couple in my church, and they went through some financial struggles. And it looked impossible for them to have a house. And this one lady in the church, she's faithful, they're a faithful couple. Uh, they're, they're part of the dream team. And she was, one, she was living with her parents. They were living with her parents. And jogging one day uh, uh, past a beautiful house, and she, and she got in her mind, that house, and this house it was for rent or for sale, that's going to be my, I'm going to live in that house. And I believe the Holy Spirit dropped that in her. You know, she saw that, 
And guess what? Even though they may have been in a situation where it may look impossible for them to get into their own place, God worked a miracle. Think about that. See, 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 it doesn't matter how many odds are against you. You see, the odds can be against you in every area of your life. But if God is for you, it doesn't matter what the odds say. See, it doesn't matter how, what the odds look like. See, the odds, you know, my, one of my favorite stories was, was against David and David and Goliath. The, all the odds were against David. He should not have made it through that fight. He should have lost that fight. All the odds were against David uh, in the natural realm. But in the spiritual realm, all the odds were for David. Can I say that again? In the natural realm, all the odds may look like it, it, it's against you. No way. Maybe, maybe you lost your job. Maybe in this pandemic, maybe you, 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 you know, you, you were unable to work. You lost your job. God can provide rivers in the desert. God can open, give you an idea to create your own business. God can do something amazing out of what's bad. Do you believe that today? And God can turn it around. Somebody say turn around. God can turn anything around. Any, but you got to have faith. You got to believe in the power of God, that God is able, no matter what it looks like, he is able to rock your world, rock your children's world in a good way. Amen. Can I get an amen there? Amen. I love that because let's look at this uh, scripture here in Luke 18, 6 and 8. It says here, then the Lord said, learn a lesson from the unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision to the end. So don't think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? I love this because see, see we're in the last days, right? And Jesus is actually saying here is that when uh, Jesus is actually saying this. He's speaking this. This is in red. Jesus said when he comes back, will he find people that has some faith? Amen. In other words, it, 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 I, I like this because I like the way the message puts it here. And, and, and Jesus just, just talked about a parable and he talked about an unjust judge right before that. And he said, and this unjust judge, he, he didn't fear man or God. So, and he said, but this woman came to this unjust judge and she was, she was seeking for some justice because somebody ripped her off, right? Somebody did her wrong and she was seeking some justice. And Jesus said, not because of, uh, of because this man was godly or even had fear of people, but he said, because the one translation said, because of her importunity. What does that mean? Because of her persistent faith. Because of her persistent faith, the unjust judge says, she will weary me. I got to take care of this situation. So, 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 so then Jesus puts it back here. If, if the righteous is crying out for justice, for instance, in this pandemic, uh, uh, there's, you know, we're supposed to be opening up in a safe manner. And, and I believe that the church has been, in a sense, locked down. And where they have the Walmarts open, they have all these things open and, and they can show social distance. You could conceivably do that in a church. But, but the church has been shut down, uh, uh, but the Walmarts are open. Yeah. Are you, the, 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 the uh, big wholesale stores are open, Lowe's is open and people are crowding into these places. And, and so, I, I, you know, uh, the liquor stores are open, but the churches are closed. And so are you listening? To what? So, so he's saying here that when we're crying out, God, the church is shut down. Move on our governor. Move on his heart. You know, open the churches back up. Glory to God. And the Bible says that that he will uh, avenge us speedily. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? In other words, if there's some unjust things that has happened in your life, has anybody ever been treated unjustly out here? Have you ever been wronged? Has anybody ever taken advantage of you? God can turn the tables around. 
God can change the whole situation for good on your behalf. Do you believe that today? And then he's, then Jesus said, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? Let's look at this in the message translation, because if you're going to be a godly mother or a godly person, you have to be a person of faith. You've got to be a believing believer. You've got to believe that the power of God can protect you if you go out shopping. Are you listening to that? You've got to believe that, 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 that no plague shall come near your dwelling. Why? Because you are in the palm of God's hands. He's not going to, he, 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 he knows every hair on your head and every hair that's not on your head. Okay, we won't go there. Are you listening? Listen, look at the message version. It said, then the master said, do you hear what the judge, the cr- corrupt as he is saying? So what makes you think God won't step in and work justice for his chosen people who continue to cry out for help? Won't the won't he stick up for them? I assure you, he will. He will not drag his feet. But how much of that kind of persistent faith will the son of man find on the earth when he returns? So so here in the message translation, he's saying that we need to have persistent faith. When Jesus comes back, our faith needs to be in, in a high level, full throttled. What does that mean? We need to be believing God every day that he's he's doing things. He's changing things. He's working miracles. He's opening doors of opportunities. He's healing us. He's delivering us. He's setting us free. Uh, My faith is on. And and we got to be believing that Jesus is coming back soon for us and that he may come back any day. He could come back tonight and we need to be so ready for his return. Glory to God that we're not going to shrink back in, in, in shame at his, at, his, at his coming. But we're going to be so excited. We're going to be lifted up, glorified with him. Hallelujah. I tell you, he's going to be saying, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You stayed in faith when all hell was coming against you, when the enemy's been trying to throw stuff at you, when all depression, all oppression, all these things, all the odds were coming against you, but you kept praying, you kept reading the word, you kept standing in faith, you kept watching the podcast, you kept doing it, and now, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I'm telling you, God's looking for a faith that's online. Pun intended. That's active. That's living. If you're going to be a faithful mother, you got to stay in faith regardless of what your kids, what they're doing. You got to believe even to the very end that God can deliver them and set them free and save them. Do you believe that today? Believe all the way up to your deathbed. Yeah, I, I, was listening, I remember a story. I, I gave this story before of this one lady that was a faith lady. And her uh, son was, was just, he was, he was for the devil, 100%. But on her deathbed, you know, she, he was, you know, right before she died, he was there. And he confessed the, 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 the you know, salvation, you know, prayer with her before she went to heaven. Think about that. Is that pretty awesome? Her faith, you know, can influence your faith. Mothers, your faith can influence your family. Hey, mothers, maybe maybe the, your, your husband's not, you know, walking in a fullness of faith like you are. Your faith can sanctify your husband. You know, I, you know, the, the husband is the head uh, of the family. But a lot of times the woman's the neck. The woman can turn the head of a man. Amen. And so really, uh, ladies, you have power of influence. And I really believe your influence is really a lot on your children. And they're going to watch what you do. I, I remember giving a shout out to my mom because my mom's a very godly woman, a woman of prayer. And I remember that I, I, I've given this story before, but it's worth uh, repeating that I was at uh, Roses. It's a department store. Anybody ever shop at Roses out here? It's an old department store. They got all, they got a lot of neat stuff over there. And, um, and so I was shopping at Roses and the lady uh, in line gave my mom a dollar too much in change. 
And so, and she tried to give back, but the lady was ringing another person up. So my mom, I was with my mom at that time, at like a good son, shopping with mom. But anyway, and so my mom went back in line, waited, I don't know, five, ten minutes to go through the entire line to give the dollar back to the register lady. And I remember that. That was that, that, that left an indelible impression on my mind. I was just, you know, a teenager at that time. And I will remember that. I remember the honesty that my mom walked in. That she was so honest over a dollar. You know what I'm saying? She, she was willing to go out of her way to, to give that dollar back. Even though most people would say, well, that's a blessing from God. You know, you know no, no, no. If, 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 the, if the lady gives you the wrong change, it's not a blessing from God. Amen. You've got to be honest and give that back. Glory to God. And so, and so really, that, that really showed me that, that my mom was a woman uh, of honor, a woman of integrity. And, and, and it makes me want to be like her. You know, I, I, you know, my dad is the same way. Um, he was a, a man of honor and integrity. He was a man that followed through on his word. If he said he was going to do something, especially if he said he was going to spank us when we were kids, he would follow through. Amen. He will never just give us idle threats. He was a son, you're, you're done. You know, I'm getting the belt out. Amen. And uh, but he followed through on his word. Amen. And, and so we need to be people like that. We need to be people of, of honor and, and, and integrity. And as we walk it out, see, you got to walk it out. God's blessing will be on your life. Amen. Let's look at Luke 2, 41 and 52. It says here. Uh, we're, t- we're talking about parents, uh, k- uh, mothers, uh, godly mothers can be uh, mentors. And it says here, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover, talking about Jesus' parents. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. And when they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. So I just want to stop here that as their custom, they went up. You know, for this uh, religious celebration. And uh, and I assume that they were in church every Sabbath because the Bible says that Jesus, as his custom, was in church on the Sabbath. So so they uh, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up in the synagogue. In other words, it is godly if you're a parent to bring your children to church. Amen. Why? Because they need to be raised up in an atmosphere of faith. In other words, they need a foundation. And, 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 and even Solomon says, give me a child until he reaches age seven and then you can do whatever you want with him. In other words, foundational truths need to be built in children. And when they get a certain age, they will start forming their own opinions and their own truths. And we need their truths to be Uh, grounded in the word of God. Amen. Amen. So we see this, that that's a godly thing to do. If you're a parent, it's your responsibility to raise up your children in the admonition. That means in the teaching of God's word. And it says here, but supposing uh, him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now, so it was after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them, asking them questions. All who heard him was astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I'll be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Jesus uh, uh, so we see that, that they didn't understand that. And Jesus advanced them in wisdom and in favor. So we see here in verse 51, then he went down to, to, uh, with them in, in Nazareth and he was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in his heart, in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom, stature and favor. So we see here that, that uh, even as parents, uh, this is interesting, they lost Jesus. <laughs> They left Jesus behind. Have you ever lost a child? Have you ever, you know, you were, you were busy, you were doing something. And I don't know if you ever left a child. I remember that uh, 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 I left my daughter at my, at my mom's house one time. I thought for some reason she was in my car. And I thought she got it. And I was driving down the road. And I said, hey, Christina, uh, Christina, I looked at my river. Where is she at? 
and I left her at my mom's house. Okay, that can happen. You know, uh, you can call me the absentee pastor. Amen. And uh, and so and so I, I had to turn around. I said, I said, Chris I had to go back to grandma's house, knock on the door. I said, Christina, she was playing with her cousins. And I said, I thought you were in the car. She says, no, daddy, I'm back here in the room. Right. And listen, I, I want to say this for parents. We aren't perfect. Amen. Parents aren't perfect. We mess up. Uh, who doesn't mess up every once in a while? And we don't always raise our kids perfectly. We can only raise our kids in a light of, of God's word that we walk in. And God will only judge us for the light. Listen, I'm going to say this to you parents and to you mothers. Don't beat yourself up because your kids are not, you know, walking out a faith life right now because you weren't that faithful in your days. Don't beat yourself up about that because you could only walk in the light that you had at that time. In other words, you know, sometimes we can mess up. We don't do everything. We're not perfect, but God can make up the difference. You know, you can start walking with God now. You can start walk. You, you can be a faithful prayer and you can pray for your children. You, you, you can you know, set the example now. Maybe you didn't set the best example in the early days, but you can do it now. You can walk in love now. They can see your faith now. They can see the change that God has placed in your life now. Amen. So I'm going to say this. Don't condemn yourself of your past. No, 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 no. Just let that go. Because God can work out something beautiful. Amen. In the here and now. Amen. Even regardless of what the seed you may sown in the past. No, 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 no. no. Don't condemn yourself. You can only walk in what you know. You were partially deceived. You, 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 you didn't know what you know now. If you knew what you knew now, you would not have been walking like that back then. Right? So God's not holding that against you. You let that go and, and allow that condemnation to be released so you can walk in that favor of God. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to your mothers and parents today? Glory to God. And so we see here that, that, that they lost Jesus and they started looking for him. And it's interesting. They probably, you know, they looked for in the arcades and they probably looked for him in the alleys shooting marbles with his friends. You know, why did it take them three days? He was in the church. They should have known that Jesus would have been in the church. Amen. In other words, if you're going to find Jesus today, Jesus is not out there in everywhere, everywhere else. You can't find Jesus in the bars. You can't maybe you can't find Jesus in the in the uh, in in uh, the different areas like the, the other venues that are happening. You no, know, you find Jesus in church. See, in church, that's where God's word. I'm telling you, if you want to find Jesus, you, you don't have to find. But but church is a good place to start. Maybe you're at, maybe you're watching online and you don't have a church home. And if you want the presence of Jesus, once this lockdown is is opened up and we can have church, glory to God. I, I want to invite all you that are watching to come out and be a part of the family. Amen. Uh, be a part of the church. There's something about just being in the presence of my preaching is even better because we have more people in the service today. I just sense the love today from you guys. I, we, we have more. We, we're almost borderline over the top in numbers. Amen. But thank God. Thank God we have favor and we have grace. Glory to God. So, so we see here that, that you can't condemn yourself for your past, but you've got to keep moving forward in God. Amen. And so we see that Jesus honors his parents. I'm going to say this to you, that, that, that uh, the first uh, commandment with promise is honoring your mother and father. Amen. And, I, and I'm going to say this, that, that uh, you know, it doesn't matter how old you get, you can still honor your mother and and your father. Maybe you can't honor them for some ungodly things that they do, but you can honor them that they brought you into this world. You can honor them for that. And, and I just want to encourage you, if you have a, uh, maybe you're older, if you have a mother that's living, uh, uh, honor her, call her, uh, uh, let her know that you're praying for her. Glory to God. Amen. Be a blessing to your mother. Amen. Glory to God. Matter of fact, I'm so excited because we're going over mom's house today. And uh, and we're so excited about having dinner over there. 
and uh, coming together. And we got a nice gift from my mom. And I'm excited about presenting that gift to her. And, uh, and I'm telling you, it's, it, it's exciting. I, I want to honor mom today. Amen. Amen. And so, so, uh, so when you honor mom, what happens? When you, when you honor your mother and your father, it's a promise you'll live a long life. Wow. You mean, Tess, Pastor, you're telling me I can extend my life? You're telling me that there's some things that I have to do to extend my life? And yes, yes, it's not automatic that you'll live a long life. What, Pastor? It's not. No, there's some. See, all the promises are God are yes and amen. But, but, but all the promises are God. You're going to have to do something with the promises. You're going to have to receive them. You're going to have to walk in them. Amen. You're, you're, they're conditional. God's pro, it's con, See, there's conditions for you to get heaven as your home. Well, what's that condition? You have to receive Jesus. You got to receive Jesus to get, to get heaven as your home. There's conditions to all the promises of God. If you want to live a long life, what's the condition? Well, you might want to love your parents. Amen. Amen. That might be a condition there. Hello. Amen. So, so we see that Jesus honored his, his parents. Amen. And so we need to continue to walk in honor. Uh, mothers and, and people that are leaders are motivators. And, uh, and I like this because uh, I, I got to shut this down because it's getting long. But, but, but I love this because Jesus' mother was instrumental in moving on Jesus to do his first miracle. Are you listening to me? Because mothers are there at the most important times of their children's lives. Amen. And, and, here, and here it says here in chapter 2, on the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus' disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what your concern have to do with me my my hour has not yet come so so jesus noticed there uh, well mary noticed there was a problem in the wedding and that they ran out of wine and so and so she brought that to jesus's attention and, and because she knew that jesus could do something supernaturally she knew that jesus could fix the problem see see jesus is a problem fixer See, wherever there's a problem, Jesus can fix it. Amen. And so, so she said, and she, it's, even though he said, woman, what does that have to do with me? My time has not come. You know, uh, she, he was like saying, this isn't my time, right? This is my time to do a miracle. He did it. Amen. Praise God. Because of her persistence and faith. And, he, and, and, and her mother said to the servants, whatever he, see, she didn't even hear that. She just said to the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Woo! What expectation? I mean, what expectation? She, whatever he says to do. She's looking at Jesus and I reared you, son. You know, whatever, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. And so, and so Jesus said, take six water pots and fill them up with water. And what happened? Draw it out. Give it to the headmaster. And then he drank. He said, you drank the, uh, and, and tur- the water turned to wine. Amen. And so he, he actually, she, he brought, you know, wine would be considered joy. Amen. He brought joy to the party and he brought joy into their midst. And he, and, and the Bible says that when the disciples saw this, they believed. They believed when they saw the miracle of the water turning to wine. And I love what it says was the headmaster saw this and said, normally in Jewish customs, you serve the good wine first. And then once the good wine is served, then you wait to serve, uh, you know, uh, the, the trash last <laughs> or the bad wine last. But you chose to serve the good at the end. And what that really means is that that the covenant of the uh, of the marriage supper uh, or of this marriage is basically God talking about marriage is a covenant and we have a covenant with God and that wine represents the blood of Jesus. And and what's interesting about this is that the Bible, it says in Hebrews that the new covenant is based on better promises. So God's new covenant is served last. The better covenant is served last. He served the best last. Think about that. Is that powerful? In other words, we got a greater covenant than the Old Testament. 
We got, we're, it's based on better promises, glory to God. It's based on the grace of God. We, ex, we, we receive the grace of God by what? By faith. We access the grace of God by us believing God, by us uh, walking in God's word and expecting God to do miracles. You believe that today? And we see that, that, Jesus, that, 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 that Mary was with Jesus when he was, was crucified. We see in John 19, 26 to 27, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and disciples whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her in as his own. So we see that that Mary was there right at the end of Jesus's crucifixion. So listen, listen, even your kids might be in a bad situation. Mothers always stick with their children, no matter how bad it looks. Mothers always stand with their children and keep praying. I'm telling you for their children, no matter how it looks, glory to God, even to the very end, because we don't give up on our kids. We don't give up. Oh, you listen one day. No, we pray for them. We, 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 we ask God to intervene in their lives. We, we just continue to sow good things into their lives. We reveal to them that they can do anything in God. And nothing's impossible without God in their lives. And, and the last thing is godly mothers are spirit filled. What do I mean by that? Uh, what I mean by that is it says here in Acts 1, 12 and 14 in the upper. It's the upper room prayer meeting. Uh, mothers are prayer warriors and spirit filled people. Then they return to Jerusalem from the mountain called Olive, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. And when they had entered in, they went up to the upper room and Matthew, James, the son of Ephelius and Simon, the zealot, Judas, the son of James. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So we see here that Mary was in the upper room in prayer, waiting on the Lord. And waiting on the promise of the Holy Spirit to empower the believer. See, I'm telling, I'm going to say this, mothers, as long if you spend some time in prayer, you spend some time, if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, spend time, some time speaking in the Holy Ghost, worshiping God, being filled with the Spirit. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if all hell's breaking loose in your home, you're going to be walking in peace. You're going to know how to respond in the right way. Glory to God. I remember listening or reading a, uh, uh, an account of John Wesley. Mother, I think she had 19 children. Oh man, could you imagine 19 kids in a house? She had nine, you thought to your two kids were, were enough. And 19, I believe she had 19 children, but she would take time and, and, and in, in the accounts of John, John uh, writing, amen, John Wesley's writing, he said that his mother would take it, her apron and throw it up over her head, and that was a time where the kids could not bother her, and she would spend time praying. Well, if you had 19 kids, you'd probably be doing that every half an hour. Right? Are you hearing what I'm saying? And she put those in and she would pray. But I'm telling you, two of her children rocked the world for Jesus. Charles Wesley and John Wesley, they were revivalists. Uh, the Methodist Church, um, you, it's all across the U.S. They impacted uh, uh, England and the U.S. with the power of God. John Wesley was one of the most powerful preachers in that day. He was would preach and people would fall out under the power of God. Oh, you hear what I'm saying today? And why, why was, and Charles uh, Wesley wrote all these hymns, glory to God, and they both were used mightily for God. Two out of 19 isn't bad, amen? I don't know what the other 17 did, but, but, but two were, were world changers. And I'm going to say this, listen, mothers, if you are prayer warriors, if you're praying, standing in the gap, I'm telling you, that's more important than, than, than even preaching at times. Prayer is powerful. And as you continue to pray, pray in the spirit, be spirit filled. Glory to God. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. You'll be able to endure uh, your family. You'll be able to endure, endure 
your spouse, you'll be able to endure anything that might be coming against you in any way or at any time. Do you believe that today? And godly mothers, as you heed to some of these principles that Mary walked in, and, and, and even godly people out here, as you heed to these keys, you're going to see the favor of God come upon your lives. You're going to see open doors. You're going to see grace. You're going to see your children turn around. You're going to see mighty miracles. Do you believe that today? I, I give a hat out, off. I don't have a hat on, but I take my hat off to all the mothers that have sacrificed all the getting up in the middle of the night changing diapers, doing all this. Mothers have a special gift. I call it a special chromosome that men don't possess. I mean, they have the ability to endure. Women are, have the ability to endure the toughest situation. Men, we, we can be little babies at times. But, but women, you, are, you just have the ability to stand under so much pressure and be able to walk it out. And I'm telling you, you deserve to, to, to be blessed in all that you do. You believe that today? Amen. 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 Glory to God. So I believe that you receive this. And uh, I, maybe you're out here. Maybe you're a woman. Maybe you're watching this online. Maybe you don't, you don't have faith. Maybe you're never brought up in church. Or maybe you had some faith, but you're not walking the walk. Or even if you're a man and you're watching this, these principles will apply to anybody. And maybe you don't know if you died today, you'd make it to heaven. Well, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. You can make a decision for Jesus today. You can start walking. Maybe you haven't walked with God. Maybe, maybe you're just walking in your, maybe you are your own God. Well, it's time to put Jesus on the throne of your heart and allow the peace of God and the blessings of God to rule your life. So I want to, I want to lead you in a prayer. Maybe, uh, you know, if you, I believe that if you're ready to do this, God's going to rock your world in a good way. And so I want to lead you in a prayer that's going to bring you into a relationship with God. Or even if you're in a backslidden stage, you haven't been walking with God, but you've known God at one time. I believe God's going to refresh that relationship with you. Amen. Just say this out loud in me and your heart. Say, dear God, I believe Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins. Jesus, I believe you were raised from the dead for my justification to make me right with you, Father God. So today, I turn from sin, and I turn to you, Heavenly Father. And I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.